Hi, I'm Dr. Christina Dervatis, an OBGYN in Newmarket, Ontario. Welcome back to my channel, Talking IUC with Dr. D, my channel devoted to videos concerning intrauterine contraception and contraceptive options. In today's video, we're going to talk about the intrauterine device compared to the birth control pill. So IUD versus the pill, what are some of the differences? What are some of the pros and cons of each? Um, these are two of the top two choices of uh, contraception uh, for many women in Canada. Uh, and so I'm just going to uh, compare each method uh, in terms of a number of different uh, characteristics. The first issue that we're gonna look at is the failure rate. When we compare the IUD to the birth control pill, and now for the purposes of today's video, I'm going to be talking about the combined oral contraceptive pill, which contains uh, both estrogen and progesterone. I'm not referring to the progesterone only or mini pill uh, in today's video. Uh, but when we, combine, when we compare the combined oral contraceptive pill to the IUD, the IUD has a lower chance of failure, a lower chance of pregnancy. Now, obviously the birth control pill and the IUD work in different ways um, and have different mechanisms of action. The main reason for the difference in efficacy is the fact that for the birth control pill, the patient needs to remember to take the pill every single day without fail. Whereas with the IUD, and whether that be the levonorgestrel IUD or copper IUD, when the IUD is inserted, the patient doesn't have to remember to do anything, really, uh, other than to remember to have the IUD replaced uh, at the five-year interval. So for uh, this reason, the failure rate is very, very low with the IUD. Uh, two uh, per thousand for uh, the levonorgestrel IUD, uh, six per thousand uh, chance of pregnancy with the copper IUD uh, versus the birth control pill. In a perfect world, if we were robots and remember to take the pill every day, the chance of pregnancy would be three per thousand. But in the real world, um, because we're human beings and sometimes forget to take the pill, the actual uh, failure rate is as high as 9% with the birth control pill. And a lot of patients aren't actually aware of that. So uh, with the IUD looking at a less than 1% chance of pregnancy compared to the birth control pill, a uh, possible 9% chance of pregnancy. So that's part of the reason that the IUD has been recommended as uh, one of the number one first line options for contraceptive, uh, for contraception because it is so very effective. The second thing that we're going to talk about is overall hormone content and exposure. Um, and here I'm gonna be talking about the levonorgestrel IUD uh, rather than the copper IUD. Obviously with the copper IUD, there's not any hormones there, so no hormone um, exposure. With the birth control pill, uh, the combined pill contains both estrogen and progesterone. Uh, with the levonorgestrel IUD, uh, we are talking progesterone only. So no, ex uh, no additional estrogen exposure with the levonorgestrel IUD. In terms of the amount of hormone that actually gets into the bloodstream uh, with each method, um, very low levels, but uh, Obviously with the mechanism of action, having to orally take a pill that then goes through the systemic blood circulation, the hormone levels are higher with the birth control pill. So measured in nanograms um, per uh, milliliter with the birth control pill, whereas with the levonorgestrel IUD, the amount of hormone in your bloodstream is much lower, uh, measured in picograms per milliliter. So in terms of ho hormone exposure with the levonorgestrel IUD, progesterone only and overall less um, hormone uh, within the bloodstream compared to the birth control pill. Now, the third thing uh, I'd like to compare is just overall hormone side effects. Um, so obviously there's some hormone in the bloodstream with both uh, options, um, but overall hormone side effects tend to be fairly low uh, with both slightly lower with the levonorgestrel IUD because the blood concentrations of hormone are lower. Um, some of the common side effects that we can see with both um, the pill and the IUD, uh, and again here talking about the levonorgestrel IUD, some side effects might include mood changes, uh, breast tenderness, 
uh, sometimes uh, headaches, uh, although these symptoms are not very common and it would be a uh, fairly low percentage of patients that need to discontinue either method because of these uh, symptoms. Um, I will say this, there is no evidence of weight gain as a hormonal side effect with either the birth control pill or the levonorgestrel IUD. No evidence for weight gain with either method. Uh, and once again, in terms of looking at hormonal side effects with the levonorgestrel IUD, uh, because of the lack of estrogen compared to the birth control pill, you would not be seeing any estrogen related side effects. Uh, and I'll refer you uh, back to um, my video number 10, which uh, deals with all of some of the possible hormonal side effects with the levonorgestrel IUD uh, for more information on hormone side effects with the IUD. So check out that video if you haven't already. The fourth thing I'd like to compare is contraindications. So with the birth control pill and the levonorgestrel IUD uh, and also the copper IUD, um, because they're different, there are different rules, if you will, in terms of who can or can't use uh, each method. Uh, now, again, I'd refer you to a previous video, number eight, uh, for full details about IUDs and who can or can't use an IUD um, for the, the full list of contraindications. But uh, to talk about some of the general principles as it pertains to the pill versus the IUD, most of the differences have to do with estrogen. So because the pill has estrogen, the levonorgestrel IUD does not, there may be some patients who have certain conditions that they need to avoid estrogen, so they wouldn't be able to take the pill, um, but those same patients may still be able to consider an IUD uh, because uh, of the lack of estrogen exposure and um, the uh, progesterone doesn't have any impact on those particular conditions. So um, some examples of that would be uh, in women who are smokers who are older than age 35, uh, in women who have had a blood clot or who have had a pulmonary embolus, so a blood clot in the lung, or who have any condition that might put them at increased risk of um, a blood clot, those women would have to avoid estrogen and have to avoid the birth control pill. Uh, anyone who's had a stroke or who has had uh, any medical conditions that might put them at risk for stroke would need to avoid estrogen and avoid the birth control pill. Women with significant high blood pressure should also avoid estrogen and the birth control pill. Um, and some women who have migraine headache, headaches that have um, what we call focal neurologic symptoms, um, so certain migraine sufferers uh, may also uh, want to avoid the estrogen and the birth control pill. Now, in each of these uh, examples that I've given, while the birth control pill would be contraindicated, the levonorgestrel containing and copper containing IUD would not be contraindicated and would be an option for all of those women. The fifth category of uh, comparison that I want to discuss is menstrual side effects. Now, both the combined birth control pill and the levonorgestrel IUD uh, can have a beneficial effect on menstrual cycles. Uh, many women on both the pill and also the levonorgestrel IUD, so Marina or Kylina, uh, might notice a decrease in menstrual bleeding uh, or, and or a decrease in menstrual cramping. And both the pill and the levonorgestrel IUD are actually used as treatment for uh, heavy menstrual bleeding and painful periods uh, and not only for contraception. Now, in comparison, the... Uh, copper containing IUD might have the opposite effect. It won't decrease or uh, decrease menstrual bleeding or cramping and may actually increase menstrual cramping and menstrual bleeding in some patients. Not every patient, but I uh, always would warn patients uh, who are having a an, an copper IUD inserted that they might expect slightly heavier, slightly more crampy periods. Now, in both women on the birth control pill and the levonorgestrel IUD, uh, there may be a bit of an, uh, uh, an adjustment phase of bleeding. Also with the copper IUD, there may be an adjustment phase of four to six weeks um, where they notice daily light bleeding. Um, for the birth control pill and also for the IUD, that 
period of breakthrough bleeding may exist for the first several months, but usually gets better over time. So both starting a new pill or having a new IUD inserted, there might be some unpredictable bleeding uh, during the first uh, several weeks to the first few months. Uh, that usually gets better over time. Um, with the leave intergestural IUD and also some women on the birth control pill, particularly if they're taking the birth control pill in a continuous fashion, uh, some women may not even have any menstrual bleeding at all with these options. Uh, and as I've explained in previous videos, that's not a sign of anything bad. It's just an effect of the progesterone thinning out the lining of the uterus. The last category I'm going to discuss in terms of comparison is uh, with respect to cost. Uh, now, if you are a resident of Ontario and less than 25 years old, currently, as of uh, January 2019, uh, at the filming of this video, uh, the provincial health plan will cover both the birth control pill or uh, the Libranergestrel IUD, uh, Marina or Kylina. So if you don't have drug plan coverage, there would be no cost to you for either the birth control pill or uh, the levonorgestrel IUD if you're less than 25 years old. The copper IUD is not currently covered under the OHIP uh, drug, youth drug plan, um, but Marina and Kylina as well as the pill would be covered. For women who are greater than 25 and, or who are age 25 and older and don't have a drug plan, um, when you're looking at the cost comparing the pill versus the IUD, of course, it's important to keep in mind the fact that the IUD lasts for, um, lasts for five years. And again, the cost per year will depend on how long you leave the IUD in place. Um, but if we were to compare um, an annual rate or uh, cost for the birth control pill, which on average might be around $20 per month, uh, we would be looking at $240 per year. Now, although uh, the Marina or Kylina IUD uh, on average is anywhere from $412 to $450, depending on the pharmacy, uh, that averaged over a uh, that averaged over a five-year period would amount to uh, $90 or less per year. So if you're comparing them, uh, actually the IUD would be uh, considered less expensive in the long term. Um, the copper IUD is less expensive than the levonorgestrel IUD. If you're paying out of pocket, uh, it might be anywhere from $85 to $100, slightly more depending on the brand of uh, copper IUD. Uh, in some places, there may be uh, access to sexual health clinics where you might be able to access contraception at low cost or no cost. Uh, but these are sort of the general numbers for someone who would be paying uh, out of pocket um, for contraception. So that's a bit of a review comparing some aspects of the birth control pill compared to the IUD. Um, I hope that this video has been helpful. Obviously, there are more um, differences and more details about uh, both methods that I didn't get into here, but I wanted to touch base on some of the uh, main issues for comparison. Uh, once again, as I do in every video, I'll remind you that in less than the time that it took to watch this video, you could have had an IUD inserted. The whole process takes just about five minutes and provides five years of worry-free contraception. That's all for today's video. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care.